Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Craig Rosevear, and joining me today are two fantastic gentlemen. I've got Stephen Cromedy and Brett Stafford from Love. Hello. These guys, <laughs> they're going to tell you some great stories. I can't wait to get into it. This is so exciting. I've already been talking off air to these guys for a good 20 minutes, and it's been so good. But I want all you guys to have a listen. So welcome to the show, Stephen and Brett. Thanks Thank for having you, us, guys. Craig. We're excited to be here. Absolutely. Well, I, I can't wait to get into this. Guys, tell us about love because this is, is a whole new evolution of real estate. This is this is just beyond anything that a lot of people would even understand. Stephen, you, you're the, I guess, the 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 Svengali, the visionary behind this whole setup. <laughs> tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, your compliments. Really appreciate that. Started back in 2007 and I think it's just important to understand that we started during the GFC. And what Bill and I did is the system was really created by default because at that time we were two senior agents, no database, starting in Bullaroo of all places in 2007, not understanding what was quite going on with the GFC. So what we did, we built a system around us to produce the leads, to produce the opportunities that gave us the ability to not only service the community and, uh, you know, do that through real estate transactions but at the same time it got us to the point of breaking even just after six weeks so it's a system that got us up and running at a time when many people were bailing water and getting out so that's that's kind of the birth of it i think that's important to understand when it commenced Anyone can sell a house in a good market, but you guys seem to be able to sell properties in, in bad markets. And as you mm. mentioned, that's when it all started. If we look at the, the global trends, I mean, right now we're in amongst the, the COVID-19, the coronavirus. But mm. if we look you know, back, say, 10 years, we've had um, the GFC, we've had recessions. It's almost like every 10 years there's another speed bump that comes yes. up. And in amongst that, there's still little bumps and bruises along the way. You know, even if we look at a, at a micro cycle, things slow down in winter. You guys seem to have like, you know, bulletproofed yourself for that sort of situation mm. with this, you know, revolutionary style of, 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 of selling. Yeah. Look, and it comes back to when one of the founding directors, Bill Kington, when he commenced real estate, he commenced real estate in the 1980s. So having worked in operating theatres as a surgical dresser, for me, it seemed obvious and at previous businesses, I had tried to get them to identify the theory of, of having an agent do everything was unrealistic because every agent, every human has a specific skill set that is their strongest area. And I was always very passionate about, about you know, distilling what those aspects are, those fundamentals attached to a real estate agent and creating mini departments that gave people to focus on delivering in that one area. And really, you know, that's very nice that you call it bulletproof and, and you make reference to what we're doing in that manner. Me, myself, because we're in it, it feels quite simple. Um, but, you know, it, it obviously works and it works at making sure that we've got those people adding value every single, you know, in every single aspect of the process and creating an experience as well. I think in these times, if you're not providing an experience, if you're not providing a professional service that provides value beyond Google and what you can get online, well, then we're in a industry that its value proposition is diminishing, whereas we've found the complete opposite. Our um, value is actually improving because of the services that we're providing the clients. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned value because uh, Brett Stafford, sales manager at Love, yes. you, you've got a, a long experience of of uh, managing teams, big teams, yes, teams, yes. intricate teams. Um, the idea that um, you know you're finding the best and highest use for everybody that comes into the organisation, um, you're not only adding value via that means to your your clients, but you're adding value to your employees, the people that work for you. You're making their life not only better as far as um, financially, but they, they, they feel like they are in a place where they are loved. They definitely are. And we take on a very holistic approach with all our team members. It doesn't matter with their, uh, you know, administration on the front desk, 
working in property management or, you know, we're directly with the sales team. We all work um, collectively together. Um, I don't know if I'll just hold it up quickly. Everyone has their company values. That's what we're employed for. Um, we're a values-based business. And, um, you know, our key value is improving people's lives. Um, and we know by doing that, um, individuals every day, that we will improve our own lives. So that's our main focus each day. And then as all those things Steve mentioned on is specifically in the sales team, yeah, people, like the difference here is that it is a team model and how people work collectively to achieve. That's the main difference and that's how people um, can go from you know, minimal to uh, large results very quickly here. Guys, one thing I, I see so often, I see your your people out on the street talking to homeowners, talking to people who'd love to buy, and they're always so happy and motivated, and and they just seem to have this endless energy. So how yes. do how do you get your team to be so so pumped? Brett, why don't you answer that one because yeah. you're within the team and. Uh, and I'd really like to see what you get to say. It's only the wrong answer, Brett, when I tell you it's the wrong answer. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, um, yeah, how we still, we, it's very, it is, it's high energy. People are pumped. Um, they are happy to be here. So, you know, we do try, we choose the right people based on attitude, number one. We show them the path through. But our days are very structured and it doesn't start in the office. Um, we set up, you know, everyone has their own individual goals um, and everyone has daily habits. And we do understand by having those things in place that that's the, that's the best way to get results out of people and for them to get the best results for themselves. So we all work here. We all work for the one company. We all do have the one big goal, um, but we're very focused on, you know, individual success and that comes down from individual planning and their own atta attainment of, you know, personal goals, which is a basis on, you know, health and wealth combined. But yeah. everything, Brett, oh, sorry, Craig, you know, yep. right across the whole business. So, you know, most recently we've just gone through a, you know, a where do you want to be in 12 months from now? Where do you want to be in six months from now? How can we help you? And in what area do you believe you'd like improvement in? And where do you see yourself in the business in the overall scheme of things? So we've just done that with 52 people. And yes. the information that we provide it's not property uh, sales specific, it's people specific. Today, I just had the um, leasing, the property management team from 9 to 1 p.m. So the first four hours was goal setting. It was getting them to identify why they're turning up to work. Because for me, I believe work stress is created for two reasons. Number one, you know, I believe we should all work hard, but we shouldn't do a hard work. And I think that saying, work smarter, not harder, we come from an uneducated perspective when we, under, when we try and identify what that is. What that means, if there's a better and, and most effective way in order to doing the work, that's what we need to do. But we must always work hard. Work, you know, working hard is smart. Doing a hard work is not. Number two, so work stress comes from, from doing hard work. Um, number two, work stress also comes from not knowing why you're at work. You know, when people are turning up to pay the bills, when people are turning up to go through the motions, what happens is they're easily, their emotion is easy, easily uh, controlled by the events that happen throughout the day. So getting them to understand having short-term goals, whether it be one month, three months, six months, 12 months, when they're taking that call, when they're doing that task, when they're doing their action, they can specifically tie it down to the reason why they're doing it. And that, that eliminates that work stress. Yeah, I love the long-term um, proposition because just like real estate where you have to be in it for a long time to get benefits, so too should your your career have, you know, a, a one-year plan, a five-year plan and, and a 10-year plan. And it's so refreshing to hear that being supported. So you're not just making better agents for your own business, you're making better people. And that just shows you've also um, got a, a fantastic platform to showcase those people based on technology. Steve, just a little bit about uh, a bit of background into into that. Okay, well, with technology, we're, we're just on the uh, on the cuffs of really taking that very serious. And I've just partnered with a old school friend of mine, um, by the name of Scott Wilson, who's from Wilson AI. So who's Scott Wilson? He actually ran iSelect Worldwide. He was the CEO for, for, that, for that entire company. So he was looking after advertising budgets, 
of $30 million per annum for iSelect alone. So bringing Scott on board, we're looking at partnering more on a level with him getting hands-on within the business and helping us grow our digital platform, helping us grow our level of artificial intelligence. And we can't go into explicit detail with what we've done, but we've already got already got a number of things happening in the back end on a digital level that you know you wouldn't see um, as someone watching us, but we can certainly feel the benefits of it as well as the people that we're doing business with. We also, one of our buildings has been already constructed, this one that I'm sitting in behind me, this can house 16 people. So with this, build it and they will come. So this is going to be our, um, you know, I guess for us, we're calling it the Love Media Team. And we're looking at, say, with the next eight to 12 weeks with Scott's help, getting this place staffed and you know the best way to articulate what we're doing the gary vanderchuk theory you know we want to get that happening um within love you know making sure that we own digitally what most people own and an, on an analog version yeah it's it's so exciting and it's super exciting you, you know there, i guess it's like an iceberg there's there's more below the surface and what people will see on on top of the surface 100%. but it's got to be such a stimulating environment for for yourselves to work in and, and exciting Definitely. you know and you can always tell every time i talk to you guys just how pumped you are to to, to do what you do but you're not just doing yes. it for yourselves you're doing it for your clients you're doing it for your customers so brett as sales manager tell us a little bit more about how these how these fantastic changes are going to help your clients yeah, well, because we're customer focused um so just very quickly and touching on, you know, you talked about energy, we talked about focus, we talked about goals, and it's tied back. They're spoken about every single day. I think one of our big things that keeps us moving in the right directions daily, we meet as a team at 8 o'clock every day. Um, that's the whole sales team, and we're actually focused and speaking about all the properties that we have um, for sale and, more importantly, what we're going to do to get those sold. Um, we talk about all the things that we've spoken about from the following week and everything that's leading us forward for the month. And I think collectively um, working together is what gets the best results for all of our clients because um, it's no st stone is left unturned. Um, we all speak, everyone has a different opinion. And by speaking to everyone who has been in the, you know, this um, industry for a long time and then more so people that have been for a short time having an opinion, um, we're able to go over everyone to make sure that for clients, you know, they're getting the best result. So opinion is one. And then also, you know, we're in sales. So the more people we speak to is who is going to get the best result. For, for us, for our clients, what they have access to is um, buyers from everyone in the company, not just ones that one individual can, and can find for them. But um, Brett, so for them, yes. Just to interject you there and, and, and add something else. With what we're doing on a digital level, how many? Yes. I'm not sure what's happening out there with buyer inquiries with other people's business, but tell Craig what we're experiencing since we've been working with Scott with our level of buyer inquiries. Because it's, un and this is why I wish you were here, Craig, so you can yeah. come in, have a look at the buyer inquiry, you could have a look at the activity, you could see the sales on the board. I'm telling you, I'm just. I'm just pinching myself with with absolute gratitude. But what um, what level of buyer inquiries are we seeing per day? Yeah, per day. So on average per day, look, we have over 100 inquiries every day. Um, wow. Specifically, last Wednesday, last Thursday, we had over 300 individual inquiries on our properties. Wow, that's amazing. So that, es that escalated into over 100 individual inspections last Saturday. So, and that's not outside open. We had individual open homes, but these inspections are one-on-one -on -one inspections with our team. And in, so in on a the back of that, market. what does that? Yep. Yeah, and what does that mean? We've just we've just on the back of sixty sales in sixty days. So, Craig, to put that into perspective, right? Our office manager, Catherine Smith, or shall I be called Kate Smith? But um, so with yeah, so Kate, edit that. Yeah, so edit that. So with Kate, right? I, I, I met with her, and obviously she's in HR, she's in compliance. She's the person that needs to be realistic. She said to me, no, we've got to double check the inquiries. It can't be right because prior to that, all the way through COVID, we've been experiencing anywhere, say, to between 12, I'm um, sorry, six to, say, 15 inquiries a day, sometimes 20, 
some days, you know, nine, whatever, but it's been averaging out those sorts of numbers all the way through. And then all of a sudden, on one particular day, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, it just went out of control. Now, I've been in real estate since January 2000, so I've seen a number of cycles. So I saw that cycle in the one of the biggest booms I've ever had from 2000 to 2003. I worked in an agency at the time where at the start of that boom, we had, you know, all of Newcastle's top agents working there. Um, and we had something like 180 listings for sale. I didn't see inquiries on that level that we that we saw come in here. And Kate said to me, go and check it, something wrong. There's got to be double ups because it was a combination of phone calls and email inquiries. And so we got Matthew Bull, who works here, who looks at our data, who looks at our analytics, who has a look at how we're tracking as well as many other things that he does. We double checked it, we triple checked it. It was exactly as it was. It was just, it's uncomprehendable. And at this stage, we're just pinching ourselves and just going with it. Yes. So there was no single thing that happened in the media or as far as government stimulus. This was just like a, a combination of all the, the things that you guys had put in place from a business that was built in tough times with yes. those processes that would, you know, come to the fore. So this, I guess, was a, a tangible moment for you, like a, wow, this is this thing really works. And I'm sure you've had those eureka moments many, many times, mm. Steve. Well, that's right. And it's like, getting your SEOs right, getting your pixels right on the back end of your website, getting all those things right on a technical level. You know, you can have the best marketing, you can have, um, you know, the best looking vehicle on the planet, but if it doesn't have the right engine, if it's not being uh, run the right way, well, then it's not going to produce a hell of a lot. And, you know, competitor conquesting, all of it, you know, that's where we're really putting a lot of our energy. So, uh, you know, it, it's bringing a high level of traffic here on a number of levels. Yeah, I think what we've seen with many businesses, Steve and Brett, um, many businesses have been caught out. They've been caught out from a technological perspective, i.e. their workers can't work from home. They've been caught out for, in, in many different ways. But you guys seem to make a point of, of reinforcing the business from every angle, from every aspect, so you can function at high levels no matter what the market is. Well, it's funny you should say right. that, and Brett will testify to this. Uh, we were very fortunate. So I uh, was um, talking to someone who was one degree of, of separation away from the health minister. In addition, that I was talking to someone who was one of the uh, anaesthetists that were on the floor if, uh, if all hell broke loose. So what happened was I came to work one day and uh, I said to these guys, we're planning for a stage four lockdown. Uh, everyone thought I was a nut. Uh, but for whatever reason, they they trusted me, they believed me, and uh, and we went into a fourteen day lockdown of working as though we were going into a stage four lockdown. So by the time everyone was alerted that there was a stage three, we'd already pl planned for a stage four three weeks earlier. Isn't that right, Bretto? Certainly was. And I think what you keep saying there, Craig, is like um, excelling in um, tough times. I think you've said that a few times. And for this specific, that's exactly what we did. We took worst case scenario planned it i think then we times it by two and then i think from really you know fantastic leadership from steve and bill combined set the path for everyone um and you know not only did we so we really pulled back as a company uh, just as far as for that but doing that so um we we're able to excel in a time where everyone else sort of retreated and really went missing well There's we no doubt of, sorry steve. We, sorry we applied our growth strategy so what everyone did we didn't comply for any of the, um, you know, for your government regulations with drop of income or anything like that. And uh, and I think a lot of businesses in real estate that have their advisors or their accountants in place, I can see what they've done as a business owner. It's evident they've uh, they've they've sacrificed their own businesses, um, sent people home, and sacrificed the number of sales in order to comply. And we were there we were at that point where we thought what do we do you know our business has gone up our profitability has gone up how do we deal with this and uh it was a really simple decision you can either have a culture of scarcity mentality or a culture of abundance mentality if you're in siege you're in siege it's going to take these businesses that have been ill-advised by their accountants by their business coaches it's going to take them a long time to change the psychology of their people 
change the um, direction their company has gone in and get back in a position of growth. What we did, we looked at 1980, 1981, 1982, 1983 and 1984. Why? That's when the recession was. We looked at that data. We halved the number of results and we put that multiplier over the current, um, you know, the current number of houses and people in our region and we built our plan around that. So we said to our people, this is our plan. This is what we're, we're doing. Once we get through stage one, we're going into stage two, which is growth. So um, knuckle down, let's get moving and, and let's not react, let's respond. And I think that's the big difference. I think a lot of people react as opposed to respond and they both have a completely different outcome attached to it. You guys have mentioned about excelling in these times. You're excelling yes. yourself. We know that. Um, what about for our listeners out there, those who want to buy, those who want to sell, how can they excel in these times, Steve Cromedy? Well, you know, I always say this, and I don't want to uh, own too much of the airspace, but again, being an investor myself and helping many people internally invest, you've got to purchase when you're ready. So I think really getting in and, and trying to make a decision as to when you're going to purchase. If you're waiting for that bell to ring, you never hear a bell ring. Like no one ever knows when a market hits the bottom. No one ever knows when it hits the top because you don't know until it's happened until after someone's reported on it. You've already missed the bloody bell. So, you know, here's what we know. We know that interest rates at an all-time affordable rate. We know that the government payments will ease off in November, and that's when we'll start to see some mortgage distress start to come through. Um, should we wait until then? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what the answer is. And I think there's three different types of people. There's those that don't know what's happening. There's those that think they know what's going to happen. And there's those that acknowledge they don't know what's going to happen. But the three things that they all have in common, they don't know. So, you know, get if you've got, if you've got stable employment, you want to buy something, there's never been a better time. I understand that. Could there be a better time in the future? Possibly. I don't know. Um, and if you're selling, I would much prefer to be selling and uh, and uh, reposition myself in the property market now than I would in a market that's going up. And so I'd most definitely tell anyone that um, has any available equity in their home that has that, that capital, why the hell would you wait until the market's going up and so you're selling here and buying there? You want to work with a really good agent that understands wealth strategies, that understands how to make money in real estate because they've done it themselves. And now's the time you want to be upsizing, downsizing or moving across. And uh, and if you're an investor cashing in, well, don't put life on hold waiting for the market. If you can check in, if you can check out now, cash in and get on with your life, do it. In relation to growing your portfolio, plenty of opportunities out there to grow your portfolio. And depending on what level of deposit you have, you can now purchase a property that's going to pay for itself. You know, look for properties that there's unutilized um, equity in the land. What else can you do to maximize the return of that property? In addition to that, how can you increase the number of tenancies as well to increase the level of cash flow? So that's my tips. I don't know what people think about uh, that advice, but that certainly served myself well and the people that I've helped along the way. Oh, I think you're definitely right on the money with that, Stephen. And and it's great to hear a strategic approach. You know, often we hear um, people saying, "Well, it's always a great time to buy. It's always a great time to sell." But and, and that may be true, but it's based on personal, you know, circumstances for whatever reason. But it's good to have that strategic approach. And I'm sure there's many people out there listening to this right now who'd love to maybe contact yourselves to to get in, and, and they might not even want to sell this year or next year. But maybe okay. who you are. And, and, and I think if they spoke to you now, they would have peace of mind. They would be feeling comfortable yeah. about their future plan, just like you guys have done with with your own your own workers, your own staff, mm -hmm. having the one year, the three year, the five year, the ten year goals with them. You you can do that for, for people who want to buy and sell. Is that right? We oh what yeah we sorry Brett you answer that one. I was just going to say we definitely can. And one thing that we haven't spoken about there is that we actually have um, a buyer find a service. So we just those things where you said why so many people have contacted us and how we've managed to, you know, have 100 people go through homes over one weekend. Um, we have a dedicated team um, who are our buyer finder team. Um, so they actually work with people. Um, they're office-based um, and helping them introduce and find the right property that they are. So people actually register with us. Um, right now we've probably got over 4,500 people registered 
looking at homes in Newcastle and Lake Macquarie. Um, and so they're not always ready to buy now, but when homes come up that they're suitable for them, um, we have real people um, contacting them and letting them know which are the most suitable for them. Um, so that's one specific part of our service. And oh, did you um, want to add to that, Steve? Yeah, I did. I just think that when you're working with a real estate agent, when you're out looking for investment properties, ask yourself this: When has an, a real estate actually a real estate agent actually asked you this question? What would you like to achieve from owning an investment property, and in what time frame? Because it's really those two questions. It's, it's the answer to those two questions that's going to depict what property you should purchase. So, uh, you know, if I want to unlock access to money in, say, a two-year period, I'm going to be looking for a dual lock. I'm going to be looking for something that I can add value to that's within the land that's not market-reliant because if I'm, if I'm buying something that I'm relying on a renovation to make money, if there's a market shift, I'm stuck with the property. But if I'm unlocking um, unutilised equity within the actual land, all that's going to happen is that amount of money is going to change getting access to that amount of money is not going to be taken away from me. In saying that, with that other illustration that I gave, doing a renovation, as we know, you make money in the purchase, not on the sale. Now, a lot of agents wouldn't, wouldn't, um, would not agree with that. But however, my illustration is this. If, and, and, you know, when you're buying one of our properties, we need to advocate for our owners. We need to get the highest possible price. But if I can purchase something for 200 that's worth 300, I'm making money based on what I've purchased it for. Um, and I really think that's key. In what time frame did you want to realize or that uh, or that that investment opportunity to materialize? And uh, and what's your end goal? What do you want? Do you want cash flow? Do you want cash? How do you want this to work? Steve, I know that obviously, you know, you're out there aiming to get the best price for, for your sellers, which you do time and time again. It's 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 a fact. But yep. it does sound to me that you care about the buyers and what's their motivation. It's almost like you're just matching these people up with love, excuse the pun, but you, you really are taking care of, of both ends of the transaction and just providing that platform to facilitate the right transaction at the right yes. time for the right people just expand a little bit about it yep. on that brett i think it's just we're very focused on just being transparent between yeah the agent and the purchaser you know it is very important for us that we deliver five-star service not just to our vendors but for the buyer as well that they feel that they've purchased you know they've got a great home at a price they're you know they've been happy to pay and just the way that we treat everyone and communicate with the purchaser um is very important it's something we speak about daily and for them that they know that this is that they've got a house at a great price and for the owner they know that this is the buyer that has the highest price in the market yeah and, and, and be because you have that long-term view you you're not going to burn a buyer because that buyer will be a seller in what yes. five years time yep yeah, definitely and Steve, you know what well, I was going to say, you know, we've got to make sure that there's no BS here and I want to communicate yeah. um, very, very clearly. That's certainly been something, Craig, that in the last three or four years we've really made our focus and we've what we've done, like all stakeholders right across the whole business, and we call them stakeholders. Without them, we wouldn't exist. You know, whether or not you're renting, whether or not you're purchasing, whether or not you're the landlord, whether or not you're the uh, the seller, we're looking, we're looking after everyone, representing, uh, representing everyone correctly in that process. And uh, one of the things that we're now doing, and, uh, and I think this, right, here's what I'm going to suggest is if you have to keep a seller and a vendor, a seller and a purchaser away from each other, you haven't done the right job. And so at the end of every month, what we do in COVID-19, um, put this on ice for a while, but we're we do a team award evening and a client night on the same night where we invite all our sellers, we invite um, all our purchasers, and we invite all our new landlords to an all-in-one night so we can have that celebration. And with that transparency, it gives everyone that sense of feeling as though they've had that, as Brett said, they've had that five-star treatment. 
Guys, it's all very exciting. I'd love to ask a thousand more questions, yeah. but we're almost out of time. Can I get you guys back on Access All Agents? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Just scratch the surface. Can I just ask Bretto a question? Yeah, go Fire for it. Fire away. Bretto, you know, you've worked in a phenomenal business outside of love. Yes. What, um, what do you, and you know, you could work anywhere. From your perspective, what is it do you, you feel as though you've gotten out of this um, environment and how do you believe that's impacted on the clients you deal with? Yeah, definitely. It's a good, really good question. Um, people ask at me a bit because I, I will just put it out there too because I have worked in other businesses and still own another business. And um, just from knowing Steve and Bill for a long amount of time, I've watched this company grow. Um, I don't think that, you know, I maybe could work anywhere else. I don't think I would um, because I'm very invested in uh, the company values, but the, it has a clear, precise um, message of what it wants to achieve and has been doing that. So I've seen how it's grown, you know, in the last 13 years. Um, I've wanted to be part of that now and see it go into the future. Um, you know, a perfect example is that, that my background isn't sales um, and I'm sitting here now as a sales manager. Um, and why is that possible? Um, because we've come in, everybody has a very clear um, system to follow and it's a system that gets success for where they want to be. So in a short amount of time that I would think it's been, I've gone from, you know, a key, to be in a key position here in the business and um, you know what the, I think the question there that you said Steve is you know what do I bring in I just bring in a severe care factor I think um, as well that I very very much understand the importance of you know customer care and the feeling that you bring in every transaction and um, that's what that we want to have with every person that we deal with is that they feel you know not just listened to but they feel heard and that they feel valued and cared for um, so when we go in with that in mind, with everyone that we're dealing with, as buyers, sellers, landlords and tenants, that's our focus and we know that results will come after that. There well, guys, go, there sure is a lot of love in the room. So yes. uh, if you want to get a little bit of love yourself, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who's just pulling their phones out right now to contact you guys. Brett, how do they get in contact with you? Yes, so definitely. Um, what we'd love to do is people call us on 02-495-8855 um, or they can email us um, as well at sales at loverealty.com.au. Um, and what I will point out there too, that it has been, you know, for most industries and most businesses, it's been a tough time. We have grown in this time. We've been putting people on and we've been recruiting like mad. Um, so if people are very interested in having you know, a company that is invested in personally, but actually giving them a blueprint to success, which has been proven time and time again, and then working with a company and a team when they're not alone, but they're working together, yeah, I would very much urge them to contact us and we'd love to have a conversation with them. All right, Brett, I'll pay you for that one later. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, a, a perfect name for your organisation, love. There is a lot of love not only amongst you guys as a team but with your clients, your buyers and sellers. And, guys, if you if you really want to move ahead and have, have some great deals happen, reach out to these guys. You can also reach out to me. I'm Craig Rosie Rosevere from Capital Property Newcastle. You can email me at craig at capitalpropertynewcastle.com.au. We're going to have these guys back on for sure on Access All Agents. We've had a great time. I've learned so much and I'm sure you all have too. And I'm going to have to say bye for now. See you guys. Perfect. See Thanks you. very Thank much. You.